Genesis 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. So Abraham stacks the rocks on top of each other. Then he puts these sticks on top of the the altar. And then he bound Isaac, verse 9, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. So we think about Isaac. I mean, certainly looking at the sky would have been terrifying, the sun. Imagine looking and seeing the brightness of the sun in your last moments of life. He must have not looked either at the knife as terrifying and sharp as a flint knife may be. No, he didn't look at the burning sun. He didn't look at that uh, sharp knife. He looked at his father's eyes. His eyes were on dad. Okay, I'm just going to keep, just look at my dad, Abraham, who was probably weeping, but ready to bring the knife down upon his son. But his eyes are on dad. And he went, he laid, he let himself be laid down upon the altar. Why? Because he trusted his dad. He loved his father. And this is so important. This is the provision of God. This is the, you know, the first thing you get when you get drawn higher than you ever want to go, when God brings you out deeper than you feel comfortable going, is you see God's preparation in your life. God's been preparing me for this all along. I can see God's fingerprints on me. Here's the second part, God's provision upon me. God's provision. Because Isaac had his eyes on his dad. He laid himself down on the altar because he loved and trusted his dad. When Jesus laid himself down on the altar, he didn't say, not my will, but I'm going to do this for my people. He says, not my will, I'm going to do this for God. My eyes are on God, my Father. When Jesus laid his life down on the cross, he did it out of obedience to the Father, not out of obedience or love to you and I. Remember, John 3, 16, for God so loved God the Father, so loved the world. He, God the Father, gave his only Son that whosoever believeth in the Son should never perish but have everlasting life. God the Father loves you. And I'm not saying God the Son doesn't either. But I'm saying that the provision of God in your life is that Jesus took the cross because of his love and his commitment and his trust in his Father. Let that set you free in guilt, from guilt and from trying to glorify yourself. Because as long as you and I think Jesus died on a cross because he loves me so, when I am unlovable, I begin to doubt his commitment, his love, his provision for me. But when you and I can rest and say, God, if your son took the cross because of you and you haven't changed, Your love, your commitment to the Son hasn't changed. You are perfect in all ways, and that can never change. Then my grace, the grace that I stand in can never be lost. I didn't do anything to win your heart. I can't do anything to lose it. But the love that is perfect between God the Father and God the Son is sure. That's the foundation. And he invites me just through faith invites you just through believing in Christ. He invites you into a rock solid love that you cannot lose if you believe in Jesus Christ. This is the provision that you can never learn until you're brought in deep past your head where you can no longer touch. And then when you have nothing left to offer and you see that God is still providing for you, 
you'll see the provision of God. You'll see the fingerprints of God on your life, and you'll never learn it when your life is perfectly comfortable. <laughs> when you're doing, you know, when you think like the hardest thing you could ever do is have to do the dishes for your mom. Look, God's got long places to bring you. And he's going to bring you to harder places than that. And when he does, you'll see that God is the provision. Jesus himself 